So, hey, y'all, we are back here today. Um, we are with truly, for me, one of the most phenomenal humans I know, Alizé. How are you? Hi, my love. I'm really <laughs> good. And our new edition. We've got the newest edition. <laughs> I love it. So this is one of the best things I really, really like about um, being able to. It's the one of the, and I I know and and acknowledge that the the panorama um, has had some far-reaching effects that have been just truly damaging and hurtful and harmful. But one of the gifts was that it did gift gift us the ability to spend more intentional, oh, more deliberate, and honestly, even more forced time <laughs> with, uh -huh. with our families. Um, and so our, our newest tiny human, he is three months old, right? Yes, Giannis is three months this past Friday. Oh, so if you were on video watching us, you get a glimpse of Alize's son, yes. he is the baby of the family. And he was joining us. If he has some, you know, insightful things that he needs to add, you see, here we go. <laughs> His insight that he's going to add throughout the conversation. Um, he is he is more than welcome. We are here to listen to it. Again, this is real life. We're not faking it. We're not making it seem something that it's not. Um, because just like the title of this episode, your gift makes room for you. Yes, and that means <laughs> me. That room means provision, it means access. And we're gonna talk, get in real deep about what that's looked like for you, Alize, what that journey has been for you. Um, because <laughs> hi, yes. You see, I told y'all he gonna he gonna help us out. He's gonna help us out and uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it, I love it. But now the journey to, to get to where you started. Um, and discovering your purpose. We were having a conversation before about when you got out of college, mm -hmm. you were sure on what brought you joy. Yes. So, but for so many people, they they aren't sure about what brings them joy. So how did you even like start to figure, hey, this this, you know, lights me on fire. This is what I like. Yes. And you know, thank you again for having me and my son. Um, so for all the folks, you know, this is I got my super mom hat on because that is definitely a new title that I have added to the resume. Um, being a mom of two now with, you know, now with a newborn. So hi, everybody. I am Alizé Garcia. Um, you know, currently I work with Nike, um, leading our social community impact, um, overseeing our black community commitment portfolio. Um, but outside of that, I would say, you know, I am a true um, advocate of philanthropy and, you know, corporate social responsibility. And for me, equity for all is really what I live by, um, you know, and access for all. And I think it really just comes from looking, me looking back at my life and seeing the amount of opportunities that I've had to do things. And knowing that when I was in those spaces, there wasn't enough people that did look like me. And I knew that it wasn't because I was super talented. It's just because it wasn't enough room. Um, and I knew that if there was, there would be so many more people of color that look like me that would be tearing the place up, you know? And I know that when you give us access, that's all we need, right? Like give us access, get, let us get out from the door and we are gonna create magic. Um, so it's always about, you know, how do you do that and, and root it back in the community? But to your question, Alicia, just thinking about, OK, what, you know, finding joy and, and making sure, you know, your heart sings with the work that you're doing. For me, it's, it's always about being really authentic and clear about what it is that I wa want and unapologetic about it. Um, you know, I grew up with my dad telling me every day to whom much is given, much is required. And for me, that meant that wherever you are, you are supposed to reach back and give back. Um, but I took that a step further and said, I want my career to look like that. Like I want my career to be reflective of the work that I'm doing in the spaces that I'm in, that we're reaching back and giving back, that I'm being, being used as a trestle, right? How am I connecting the corporate world to the community? Um, and I've been able to do that, you know? 
I think I had one hiccup in my career where I took um, a job because of the social pressures around me. Yeah. But after that moment and realizing, okay, I don't care how much money I'm, I'm making. If I don't love the work and it doesn't feed me, it truly doesn't matter. I'm going to walk away from it um, because I have to be good and I have to feel good about myself when I lay my head on my pillow at night. You know, it's not just enough for me to be able to buy certain things and do certain things. Like, that's great. If I'm spending eight hours of the day hating the work that I'm doing, mm-hmm. I'm doing myself a disservice because now I can't show up in my true form for my family, for my friends, and for my community. Um, so, yeah, I think it's about that authenticity and, and really being clear, you know, about what you want and not wagering for nothing. I love that. And and that clarity that you speak of is something that um, for me aligns so much because too many people allow the societal pressures to decide what they go after, what they believe in, mm-hmm. how, you know, what direction they're going to go in. And it's like, it looks great as one. And don't get me wrong. I like Instagram because I use it as a, as a form of motivation. Um, but for some people, they use it as a tool for comparison. And so if you and it's not just Instagram, it's other platforms, too. But if you're constantly using what someone else is doing as a tool for comparison and then creating and building out a life, your life based on what someone else is, is posting, is celebrating, is, you know, highlighting, then you miss out on like the magic and the value in your own purpose, right? Correct. And you have to remember too, what looks good on you might not look good on me. And that is that goes for everything in life, from yeah. clothes to career to marital statuses, you know, relationships, like all these things. Like, yes, you look great and you're thriving in marriage, but maybe that's not for me. So mm-hmm. me feeling like I need to do that is taking away from what I really should be doing or, oh, you just bought a house. I need to go out and go buy Like, no, like, and it's hard, right? It's really hard in the era that we're in now. And I'm, I tell my little sister all the time, I'm so grateful that we didn't have social media when I was in college and like starting my career because one of the things I think that we all lost, um, is, our ability to really tune into ourselves because we're so distracted. And I think like thinking back to like the fire that I had in college, Mm -hmm. a lot of that was because you hadn't, you had to do what you wanted to do. If you were going to do something based off of someone else, it was usually like what you were seeing in real life. Right. But now when you have access to to everyone's life 24 seven, when you stop and you say to yourself, damn, well, we started, we started, you know, I got this job at the same time she got this job and now she's the VP and like, now I need to hustle and do, no, right? No. Because you don't know what it took for that person to get there. You don't know what it's going to take away from you to get there, right? And, and to maintain and, it because you have to maintain, maintain it. it. And what if you maintaining it causes you to, to lose everything? Lose everything lose everything. Like I was talking to a girlfriend of mine last night and, you know, I've been very vocal about um, right now, like a lot of the struggles that I'm experiencing in making, you know, career transition and family health and all the things. And I was showing her an image of, you know, what I was dealing with at the time. And she was just like, I don't know how you're not a psychopath. And I laughed. Um, And I was like, what do you mean? And then she just listed out just a few of the things that I had gone through so far in life. And she was like, I need you to give yourself more credit because if this had happened to me, she's like, I would have been on the side of somebody's road Mm -hmm. walking aimlessly without my mind. Correct. So you got to understand what somebody else may be able to take with it with ease. Yeah. So, oh, this is giving me chills because it's like, Figure out who you are. Keep your eyes on your own paper. Keep your eyes on the on your own prize. And yeah. you know, because again, to your point, you are so busy, you know, and we, 
you know, let's make this a we thing, right? Yeah, we're we're only being honest with ourselves. Yeah. We can be so busy running someone else's race mm -hmm. and not realizing that like God allowed that person to get through that race for a very particular reason. You're running into a whole bunch of hurdles running someone else's race because it's not your race, right? Race. So now you're adding on additional burdens to, into your life because God is like, listen, you're not even supposed to be over there. <laughs> you're supposed to be all the way over there. Why are you there? Are you I need you here. here. I need you here. And if you stay there, you're making your life a lot harder. You know, so I think for me, you know, the beauty and, you know, thank to God and just discernment is just like, me knowing that, like, listen, I love the work that I'm doing. And luckily, you know, things have unfolded the way that they have because I'm just staying focused on my race. I'm staying focused on the things that I know God put me here to do. And, yeah. you know, again, it's easy to want to be like, I need to be here. You set these goals and yeah, live in the moment, right? Because God is making a way, you know, and maybe there's folks that's not super religious or spiritual, but, you know, we throw out the word universe and, you know, all those things. Um, and if that's what you believe in, like, understand that if you're doing what is true to you, the universe is going to unfold. God is going to unfold the steps. It may look like, you know, how am I going to get from A to B? And miraculously, he throws in a step that's going to get you there. You know, if folks will look at it like you just walked on water, right? But again, <laughs> you doing what you were, were meant to do. And that's yeah. why it looks easy. And that's why it looks seamless. And we see that. And we see other people living their life with quote unquote ease. Mm -hmm. And think, okay, I'm going to take that route. No, it's easy for them because they're doing what they were ordained to do. You know, and now... Um, we all know, you know, you know, when you are your happiest, yeah, when you're the most full and you know, when it has nothing to do with, um, external factors, right. It's not, I'm happy because I get a corporate card. I'm happy because I get to speak on a bunch of panels. I'm happy. Yeah. Because, like you're just happy. You're just full. Um, yeah. and for me, that's the feeling that I'm chasing and I was reading something or I, I can't remember, but the person said, you know, when you want things, it's not about what you want. It's the feeling behind it that you're chasing. So when you say to yourself, okay, I want more money, you know, dig a little bit deeper. Why? You know, what is the feeling that you're looking for? Because maybe it's not money that you need to get you that feeling. Maybe it's just building better relationships with your friends and your family. That's going to get you that feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. Think about that. And that's one of the things that I really try to do um, when I find myself in that space of like wanting more. It's like, okay, you're saying you want this, but truly, what is it that you're actually looking for? And now let's work backwards from that. Yes. Listen, this is why talking to you, I just get like, mm -hmm. it literally feels like a blanket. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know how like when you're being put to bed and you, you know, you lay it out. And your, your, your parent or your mother or your guardian or your man or your woman or your partner or your whoever, somebody who cares about you, they'll put a little a little pillow under your head and then cover you up with a little blanket so you don't chill. That comfort. Yes, that's what it feels like when you, like anytime you speak, whether we're on here or even when we're just talking, there's a, 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 a beauty, a, there's a, and I hate to use the word beautiful, but that's the best word I have for it. There's a, a beautiful, like a, like a balm. Mm. Like it's just such a peaceful because you're so sure and aware of yourself. And that's something that people think that I've always had it. And I'm like, no, I'm just very verbal. But the mm. loud person doesn't mean they're the most confident. It just means I'm just verbal. And so for me, that's always been something that I literally would like pull up to like, Ooh, just what she gonna say? I mean, I don't have it. Doesn't even have to have. It doesn't have to be a mission or in anything. Just the I know when you open your mouth and speak that it's going to be something that is going to cause me to see differently, mm -hmm. um, cause me to 
adjust maybe a frame of mind or a way of thinking that may or may not, you know, be beneficial to what it is that I want. And so I always like to hear, you know, origin stories or or how folks have evolved. And so what has it been like? Because you've been sure and clear from the beginning on, on what lights your soul on fire. I remember you telling me about knowing like what your guardrails were from the beginning, like what this was. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me, how do you think your purpose, um, do you think it's evolved or has it evolved like as you are continuing to, to expand in your career? Um, I think my purpose has stayed the same. I think what has expanded is like my reach. Um, you know, I think at one point it was just strictly, you know, I just really want to focus on the black community. That's it. Um, which is still like priority number one, but understanding that there are a lot more areas where folks are disadvantaged um, that I can tap into that when I talk about equity and access for Black people, you know, that holds true to a lot of other communities, right? And I think for me, as I've matured and grown in this space is realizing, okay, I'm blackity black, 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 you know, and I want us to win because, you know, again, growing up in Harlem, knowing that my parents busted their ass to give me access, you know, that there were a lot of of guardian angels that have entered into my path throughout my life. Um, But that's not the same for everyone else in my community, right? And like we were talking, it's not... So many times it's not that we're the smartest ones. We just had parents that maybe worked a little bit more consistent or mentors or someone else who just believed in us. But like, how do we do that for all of our, you know, black and brown babies, you know, and, and give them a chance and opportunity um, to win, you know, let, let them get in the room and then decide that they don't want to be there. But, you know, it sucks that we, we don't get, they don't get the chance to even be in the room, you know, like, Give us the chance to be in a room and say, you know, I want to go back. Um, okay. Then that's a different conversation, right? That's different. So I think for me, it's just like my, the communities that I want to serve have expanded. But my mm-hmm. purpose is stay the same. And I think that I love that about me. Yeah, it's consistent. I, I know, I know what I'm here to do, you know, and again, I find that like I, I I I do a lot of reflecting of like who I was as a young child and like um, the things that was important to me, you know how I showed up in spaces as a as a teenager, um, as a college student, to make sure that I'm always that those dots are connecting right. That mm-hmm. Alize at 15 is proud of Alize at 32. That the Alize at 18 is proud of the Alize at 32, right? That like, you know, and and I say that to say, and and I, and I want to caveat that with, <clears throat> don't hold yourself to who you expected yourself to be as a child. That's not what I'm saying, because there's a lot of us that are doing that. That's like, I said, I'm going to be a doctor at six. So I'm going to be, I have to be a doctor. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm I'm legitimately talking about characteristics and traits yeah. that because I think and I and I go back to that point because I know that during those periods of time I was truly fearless. I would go without any thought. You know, I was going to always take the risk. I think the older we become, having kids, being married, you know, all these things that yeah. are beautiful things make us a little bit more risk averse, right? And that we start mm-hmm. to like pull back a little bit. So I check in with my younger self because I recognize who she was and that fearlessness in her. And is is that still being shown today? Um, mm-hmm. Not necessarily like, because I thought I was going to be the president. I said I was going to be the first black president. Like that was, I remember that day clearly in the sixth grade. So um, <laughs> No, like, let's not hold ourselves to our occupations and our careers. But if you think back to, like, you as a child, there is probably, like, this fearlessness little girl or or little boy inside that 
had these dreams and this gusto to do things. And sometimes when you feel like you're losing course, it's okay to tap back into that to make sure, like, you know, how do I find that? How do I, at 32 with two kids and married, how do I still show up as fearless? Mm. To my, my mission and my value um, in life. So yeah. that's a real thing, especially what does fearless look like at this stage and phase in my life? Because I was, yeah, it looks different. And being able to acknowledge the fact that just because it looks different doesn't mean that it's not still, you know, fearlessness. It's just fearless mm-hmm. on, on a different level. Okay. And so then what has it looked like for you? Because there, there is some, there is some true frustration that comes and even honestly mental exhaustion that comes when, when you are growing and identifying what the new fearless is or what, 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 what it looks like going after it now. Like, how do you handle that with those frustrations and that mental exhaustion that comes with growth? Because growth isn't comfortable. You have to do more. When those teeth start coming in, it is an uncomfortable experience. It's uncomfortable. It's my daughter, Gwyneth Bear, she just turned two. And, you know, she is growing and watching her uncomfort, right? That she is trying to continue to develop her speech and how she wants to express herself, but she doesn't have all the words. And to see that frustration that comes out um, because she's growing. And for me, it's been really finding space to give myself grace and finding. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, so, okay, so grace is one. Yeah. But really, it's my community. Because, and, and I will say, like, my husband has been that for me because he does a very good job with railing me back in um, to help me put things back in perspective. And, like, whether that's your husband, your mom, your best friend, like, you need someone Somebody. to help you put things back in perspective because you can get so frustrated because sometimes. We believe we should be going faster than we should be going. You know, we believe that, or we can't believe that we're hitting a hurdle. Um, Sometimes the hurdle is so big that we then no longer can see past it and we forget what our goals are. So it's like, how do you, you know, who are you around that you shared your goals with and you shared what you are trying to accomplish in life with? That beyond it's holding you accountable, but that can serve as the person that's going to kind of put that train back on the tracks when it falls Mm -hmm. off. Um, And it's going to help you reset because in those moments, that's all you need. Right. With grace, Mm -hmm. you need to allow yourself to reset and you have to allow yourself to say. Me pausing right now may be the fastest thing that I can do for myself, because if I keep going, I may cause I may set myself back you know, worse than I think I'm doing because I'm not moving at this moment in time. Um, So for me, it's really, it it truly has been my husband that has like kept me together in those moments of like, listen, let me remind you what you just accomplished. Let me remind you what you just did because sometimes you're in it and we don't take time to reflect as well as we should so you forget that you just move mountains. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, I, I need to do it again. And it's like, it's no, it's rest and recovery. It's, you know, it's time for rest and recovery. It's time for celebration. Like, get, allow yourself all of those moments after you accomplish your goals and you get past it. Because if you don't, that's when you find yourself in those moments where it's like, oh, why am I doing more? And it's like, girl. Calm down, <laughs> like calm down, relax. It's okay. Right. You, you you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in this moment, right? Because then it goes back to what we said. You looking over there. You're looking at someone else accomplish. Right? You mm-hmm. just got to your finish line. Why are you not celebrating yourself? Why are you not honoring what you just did? But well, because you're now paused, whether it's frustration, you know, 
or, or whatever it is, you're in a pause moment. You're in a moment of, uh, in, in, in this frozen moment in, in season time of your life. But because everyone else is moving around you, you're like, I need to keep going. I need to be moving too. And it's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, that it's was so good. good. It's easier said than done, of course. Well, yeah, but that's that's what most of life, right? Most things are easier said than done. But you just said something, and I don't want anybody who's listening to to miss that. Um, there's a season for everything, and sometimes when you're in a season of 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 rest or of restoration or of of refreshing too, because when you're running a marathon, and no, y'all, I have never run a marathon. But I've watched people run marathons. <laughs> and when the folks who do run the marathon, which is much like our life, when they're running a marathon, they do have to take moments to refresh themselves. And so if we consider the pause or, or the frozen part is like, if we consider it a refreshing, then we'll look at it differently because yeah. you do have to stop to refresh, to drink water, to yeah. stretch out your limbs so you don't get a cramp in them. Like you have to refresh yourself so that you can be prepared to run the next leg of the race. Yeah. But if you just go, 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 go with never stopping, you could have a whole heat stroke. You could fall yeah. out. And you're going to set yourself back. Yeah. Right. My dad would always tell me that like, you're so busy. You can get so busy trying to do everything that you did. You, you did one thing too many. And now it set you back. 10 steps yeah. and now look at you, right? And it's all about reframing mm -hmm. those moments of our life, right? And it's being able to sit and say, okay, if I don't look at this from a negative lens and I look at this from a positive lens, what is it now looking like? What is, what, what does, what does this now look like? You know, um, you know, again, it goes back to like having those people around you that can really put you back on track. And for yourself, knowing that if you are staying true to what you believe that you should be doing, that you can honor all of those rest stops. Honor. If you are doing what you are supposed to be doing, you know in your heart that this is what you were put on earth to do, whatever that is, right? Um, then you can truly honor those rest stops. And it, it, it's, it's just, it's mind blowing because even as I'm saying that, it's like, you know, folks, even when we, when we say that, it, the, the difficulty is we all, unfortunately, as like a human race, like has to like step up because, you know, we look at the bigger the title, you know, it's like that. Those are the people that deserve the rest, right? And that's and that's even for us, right? It's like, well, I'm not there yet, so why should I be, you know? Or I'm not, and it's like, what does what what is I'm not there yet? Like, what 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 is that, right? Because if you're the jan if you're a janitor, you need to honor your rest moments. If you're a stay at home mom, you need to honor your rest moments. If again, because if you are doing again what you were put on earth to do. And my dad always said that like, whatever your passion is, whatever your mission is in this life, it can be to be a hairstylist. It can be to be a janitor. It can be to be a teacher, whatever it is, right? If it's true to you, you'd be the best of that. But just because it's not top level, you know, it's like, oh, then you don't deserve to stop. And, we, and then we adapt that model. That's like, well, I'm not there yet. I haven't accomplished. All I need to accomplish, so I don't get to stop. And it's like, no, girl, disregard that. Disregard that's the whole sermon. Like that is a we could mic drop. We could all go home. <laughs> like it's not about your position. We all deserve rest. Honor your refreshing. Like honor that. Whatever you're doing, honor, honor that. Honor that. Ooh, girl. Ooh, I, listen. I just get so excited with the gems. It's the gems for me. <laughs> But with with so you have been clear, right? Mm -hmm. You have been clear on on what your purpose is, what brings you, what excites you, brings you alive. So then, if you had to like sum up like your personal life's mission in one sentence, what what do you think it would be? 
in one sentence, I think I, and, and this is, you know, it's funny because I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I started individual therapy and one of the things I'm working on yet, which is like lovely, I should have done it sooner, um, is me being comfortable with just like spitting things out, right? Like if someone asks me a question, like don't think too hard about it because you have the answer in your heart. And like for me, the Virgo in me comes out. So like you want it to be as perfect as possible. Um, <laughs> so you said that and I had the answer and then I stopped because I'm like, oh, I need it to be sharper, right? You know, and again, this goes back to like we being real, right? Like this is, this is the work that we have to do with ourselves every day, like yeah. in this moment, right? So you guys are witnessing this in real time. They're like, she asked me a question. I had the answer and I paused even more because I'm like, mm, that's not good enough for y'all. But I would say, you know, my that, that mission and what came to mind first was equity and access for all. That That is it, you know, and because going back to my original, you know, opening with you guys is like as I look back when I really do look back at the different programs and things that were in like that access piece is so important you know and the equity piece is so important like you know and, and we all know this and we're learning this right it's like we fight for equality and it's like no we, because not all of us can start at the same place because we're not we're not starting life at the same place yeah. right so how do we meet people where they are to give them the access that they need to really show up to be their best selves. And that's what, that's all that I want to do, you know, and I am happy that I've been able to find companies um, that I've been able to do that with. Um, and, you know, at some point in time, like, you know, I have dibble dabbled in my own, you know, work on the side, but, um, I'm happy that I can do this where I am until I am truly ready and confident to go full throttle in the space of an entrepreneur. Because like we said, everything isn't about entrepreneurship and to be your authentic self and to live out your mission, that doesn't mean you have to work for yourself, right? It, Amen. What that means is because regardless of where we are, we're always working for ourselves. You need to show up as an entrepreneur in every space. Um, all that it's about is making sure that, you know, we're being cognizant to our why and we are attaching ourselves to companies and people and places that respect our why and is going to allow us to push our own personal agenda through the corporate model because that's how we make businesses better, right? We yeah. want to change the world. Um, and when we're working in, you know, billion dollar companies or million dollar companies or small startups or whatever they are, yeah. you know, it's diversity in thought, it's diversity in experiences and you being authentic to what you believe in can help make that company the next Amazon. You know, you can help make that company the next Google because you stay true to your mission and, and you found the space for it to thrive at this corporate, um, in this corporate space. Absolutely. And you just said something that I'm a firm believer in, in that people, too many people wait to be given the opportunity. Oh, well, you know, um, they didn't give me a chance or they didn't this or they didn't that. And it's like, but how do you own your own level of growth? How do you own that? How do you, or do you go into an organization and not that you don't take some time to, you know, suss out the landscape, see who the major players are, determine, you know, how your role affects and, you know, benefits the, the organization as a whole, you know, your teams. Yes. Survey the land like those land surveyors survey this new landscape. But then once you've surveyed it, find you, whether it's an ally, whether it's a mentor or whether it's a potential sponsor that you can say, hey, this role in the in the organization is what I'm looking to do, or this work is what I'm looking to do. What do you believe is the best path for me to build mm -hmm. to that? Like, what does that look like to be intentional, right? Yes. About what it is that you want, because end of the day, most people are trying to fulfill their own purpose and mission and, you know, their own, you know, 
make sure they hit those KPIs so they don't have the time to think for you and for them. Nope. So and go ahead. No, and I think that surveying the land is it's it's, it's so important because. That was something I did when I was at Intersection. Um, you know, I came in and I saw like, okay, we could be doing a lot more in a couple of spaces. And after spending time, you know, for me, it was 30 days um, surveying the land. I said, okay, well, this is how, this is, this is how I can help. And, you know, again, taking on work that was outside of my job description until I was able to figure out how to intertwine the two. And again, it's like, you know, don't be afraid to do that, but you, and I think where people maybe sometimes mess up at in this space is that don't come in without doing your due diligence, right? Because that's when you you forego the opportunity to build allies and supporters yes. and look at you as a subject matter expert in this space. You know, again, you can be in a company with a thousand people, but you can still make yourself stand out for yourself, right? Like, Absolutely. And, and that is why it's so important to do your due diligence, build those relationships and make sure that you have people now. And when you're going on these coffees and you're making friends and relationships with senior leaders in the company and you're telling your story and you're showing them outside of what you hired me for, I am a subject matter expert in all these other spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and this is my goal for us as a company, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, attaching it to someone's bottom line always makes someone's ears open up, right? So all the way open. <laughs> so it's, just, it's, it's also that piece too, in terms of being strategic, but, you know, we all can do it. You know, you can, you can be, you can live out your mission and your and and what you want to do on this this earth as an entrepreneur, and you can live that out in the corporate space, because um, both require the same amount of work um, and authenticity. Authenticity, um, you showing up for yourself truly, because you can be an entrepreneur doing work that doesn't serve you either. But because you're working for yourself, uh -huh. that's that is the only thing you're looking at, right? Um, so Girl, you better tell my business. The less, <laughs> you know, because that's the other thing too. You can't assume that everyone that's an entrepreneur is doing the work that they love. Say that. That is literally why I closed down my business of eight years. I hated it. I didn't like it. I was my own warden and the prisoner. How do you lock your own self up? You show up in prison and then lock your own self in to serve your time. I literally hated it. But no, I'm an entrepreneur. I got to keep this going. Like, no, what does it look like to be honest with yourself and to say, this mm -hmm. does not bring me joy? Correct. It doesn't bring me joy. Regardless of what, what the oh, that 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 initial title is. That part. And then holding on to it, making it. And it's so crazy because I'm a firm believer that, you know, your title is what you rent, but who you are is who you are. Um, and I forgot that in my own business, I'm like, well, Oh, this is my title. This is what I do. So I got to just keep doing it, even though it hadn't brought me joy for years. And I just kept doing it. And it's like, I had to remind myself, you are not a tree. You can move. You can move. And nothing truly is, nothing is ever lost. Like mm -hmm. every skill, you know, that you learn or that you gain, like it really is yours to keep. Mm -hmm. Kind of like once you get an education, no matter what happens, you have that education. Right. So like, what, what do you think has been like one of the most far left skills that you like deemed super irrelevant at the time, but that has been like invaluable for what you do now? It's weird because I have to say, <laughs> I would have to say discernment, right? Mm -hmm. I'm good with that. I'm good. I have really good discernment yeah. with people. Um, and it's a skill set that you don't think that you need to bring into your work because, like, what are you discerning, right? Like, you do your work, you, you, you're going to do well. Like, you know, you're supposed to be judged by these KPIs and, you know, whatever, right? Like, work yeah. is going to make itself make sense. Um, 
But I realized like, yes, that's true for your end of the year goals. But for the work that I'm doing, working with communities, and I really saw it when I was working in the mayor's office. And when you're building relationships with people, and like for me, like working so closely with nonprofits, working so closely with the community, a lot of times you got to go off script. Like you kind of got, you have to go with the feeling of the moment and somehow make that make sense to the people back at the ranch, right? And <laughs> for me, that really became my superpower, right? Being able to say, guys, like, this doesn't feel right for this group that we're working with. And I don't know why, but I think we need to re-strategize. I think we need to come take a step back. I think we need to allow them to drive this. And, you know, over time it showed itself as to why. Um, so that's now something that I that I, I harness and I live by that. And like when I come into new spaces, I tell people like I have really good discernment. And I may say things and I may make suggestions that might not make sense in the moment, but just stick with me here because I haven't been wrong yet. When 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 that um Harry Potter <laughs> ding, 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 the antlers. <laughs> Whatever it is, y'all, I've never seen Harry Potter. Y'all don't just yeah, little um, thunderbolt goes off. You know, it's like, you know, just just stick with me here on this one. So I think that has really been something that has um, served me really, really well in this work. And I think when I, the more I think about it, it's like it's one of the most important skills because again, I'm working with people, I'm working with community, I'm working with people that many times aren't able to advocate for themselves, and I'm being the voice to advocate for them. Um, you know, so using discernment is really important to, for me and for them. That is so good, primarily because of all the things I would have ever thought you would say, I never would have thought discernment, but literally, because you are so wise beyond your years. And I am going to attribute that to your ability to discern because it's, you don't have to wait for someone to say something. You can feel like, no, this is the route we're supposed to. It makes you wise. It, there's a, a level of wisdom um, that comes with being able to discern what, what is the best path or approach or how should we best you know, move here or go there. Um, and, and even with that, like being able to, too, utilize your skills. And there's a, there's a skill that comes with being able to know how you should move in spaces and places mm -hmm. that are new for you. Like that's a whole skill set. And so when you when you have learned and honed that gift, like your gifts making room for you, in my belief, it means you know greater provision, more access, opportunities, and and and, and growth. But how do you believe, like throughout your journey, that your gifts have made that room for you? Hmm. You know, that's an interesting one. You know, I think that they've made room for me in the sense of really being that next, um, always being that next step, right? So it might not, it necessarily wasn't in the spaces, but the gifts were working behind, you know, in the background, preparing me for that next leap. So it was always that next pedal that I couldn't see um that would present itself at the right time so you know i would be in the states and wondering how i'm going to get from a to d and the gifts that i have you know allow for b and c to show itself um without me necessarily having the call on it um and that's something that i'm grateful for because you know that that looks like people advocating on your behalf that looks like um people sh sharing your names in rooms that you're not in. You know, that looks like um, people taking chances on you. You know, there's been so many opportunities mm -hmm. things that have come to me from people that I've never met um, simply because they knew what I was passionate about. Um, they knew that I was really honest and authentic to that passion. So for whatever it was worth, uh, opportunity came to them 
and and they threw my name in the hat and boom, you know, that got me there. You know, that got me into the mayor's office. I knew no one in the mayor's office. The the security guard at the in the building of my first job that I would speak to every morning. Him and I would have you know casual conversations. He would see me dipping out um mm -hmm. to do different things for Young Harlem. Um you know, the nonprofit that I was working on at the time. And someone from Senator Schumer's office was talking to him about a role that opened up in the mayor's office. And he said, yeah, I know this girl that she loves the community. She's like from Harlem. You should reach out to her. He calls me. And this is at a time when I was trying to figure out what my next step was going to be, you know, how to get into the door. And I got a phone call from him that said, hey, someone's going to call you in an hour. And I'm like, OK, sure. And this woman called and said, listen, you got to be at City Hall on Wednesday for this job. And um, I ended up getting a job at the mayor's office. You know, I never met this woman to this day. So, like, again, that's that is what I think your gifts, you know, how they show how they shown up for me um, is, is less of it is, hasn't been too much in the spaces I'm in. But it's like they show up right when it's time for me to move on. Mm -hmm. And the it's, it's the the um, that bridge like my gifts create bridges to each role. So I know that like I don't have to worry because again, as as long as I remain me, yeah, oh, something's gonna be working on the background. That when it's time for me to take that next leap, it's gonna show itself, and I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. for that. You just said so much. And 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 even Giannis agrees. See, he's he he's, he woke right up, y'all. He, he, he is in full agreement, primarily because what you said in there was a um, yes, your gift will make room for you, but you also have to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. If you hadn't already been doing the work with Young Harlem, then there wouldn't have been anything to talk about with the security mm -hmm. guard, who then could have the ear to a person that you, like you said, you still to this day has never met this person. And they became a sponsor for you. Yeah. Like, and they became a sponsor for you based off of the word of someone they trusted. And that's another thing too, that you said in there. Don't let your title confuse you. The same respect that you give the CEO is the same respect that you need to give the, the person, the doorman who opens and holds the door for you the janitor who cleans it to, to cleans up the space to make sure that you have a nice place to work in. Cause I remember we used to clean churches. We used to clean, you know, school board offices. We, we used to clean, um, you know, buildings where, where schools, where kids were going, like don't look down on the person nope. who is cleaning because the same girl who was, you know, scrubbing floors and, you know, cleaning folks houses is also the same girl who can, Call two billionaires, one multimillionaire to make make some shift some some shifts happen if I needed it. It's the same person, but if you don't have the respect for the person who you think can't get you anything, then your respect for the CEO or anybody else with a title is fake and it's a fraud. Mm -hmm. And eventually, somebody gonna find out because you're gonna mm -hmm. go back to being who you are. Hello, you are who you are before you got here, folks. Always. You are who you are. Now you can better yourself. You can commit to making yourself better, but you are who you are. And people will find out, you know, and I think that that, that model really came from my dad because again, as a, you know, having his own barbershop, being a barber, being a, a, a man that, you know, really had to, you know, he figured things out on his own. Yeah. But it was always, you give everyone respect. Like that was something he instilled in my sisters and I, you know, so for me, I'm, I'm going to talk to you regardless, you know, we, you know, I'm going to have the same type of enthusiasm and conversation. If you're a good person, you're a good person. I'm not worried about what you do. Right. Um, and in that moment, it showed itself, like, imagine me, you know, and again, this was my first job coming home, you know, me thinking I'm too cute, my little job and I'm passing by the security guard not knowing that in the future he's going to hold my future in his hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know who's going. You don't know who's going to be responsible for your next anything. Mm -hmm. 
and your spouse, you know, being the person to, you know, get you a good deal, you know, whatever it is, you never know who that person is going to be. So, you know, treat everyone with the same level of respect and have the enthusiasm for everyone. Um, Cause you truly never know. You, you, you truly don't. And it's this conversation for me um, has been my refresher. Like I loved it. And yes. Oh, he loved it too. Listen, he, he's been adding his two cents into our combo. Yes. Thank you so much for this. We needed your support. <laughs> But no, Alizé, I want to know, how can we stay connected? Where can we stay connected? Because, um, again, for me, I know, and if anyone listened to this, I know you feel just the um, the peace and just the, the 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 gems that were dropped because I'm over here with chills. So I know y'all felt it because I feel I'm feeling this. I know y'all did, too. Oh. This was such a good conversation. So how can we stay connected? Where can we stay connected? All the things. Yeah, well, you guys, you can find me on social. No, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, you get, you can seriously find me on social. Um, you know, my handles are Alize B Garcia. Um, you know, you can check out my website. We give two. Um, I've had to kind of take a step back because the work that I was doing on We Give Two is similar to some of the work that I was doing at Nike. So, still trying to figure out how to do both without a conflict of interest, but. Um, you can definitely check out the page and um, yeah, email me alizé.bl at gmail.com. You know, DM me Instagram. We all use that for text and everything else. It seems like um, yes. it, serves, it serves all the purposes. All the purposes. Um, but yeah, no, connect with me and and you know, love to have these conversations. I love talking to my friends. Um, you know, and again, love like right now for me, my my. The season that I, that I am in is really looking at building a community. You know, I, I know that I need a little bit more in my personal community. So I really love to like connect with more um, like-minded people and, you know, women and men, you know, and, and to see how we can better each other. Um, so seriously, like if you are interested or like if I did come off as a slightly exciting, um, you know, please, you know, reach out because I am actually, I'm, I realized that, you know, between the pandemic with the babies, you know, I've kind of like, I have a cap on like the new relationships I've built. I have, feel like I haven't built any like new ones. Um, so I really am open into like building new relationships and with folks. And um, so yeah, connect and I I'm open. this is the season of openness and, and openness for me. So I am really excited. So if you reach out, I will respond. Sure. I love it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, tiny human. Say bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye, bye. 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 <laughs> this was so, so good. Make sure you guys stay connected. I'm everywhere at Alicia Reese. If you want to find out more information about what we're doing at RGLP Group, you can hit us on our website, rglpgroup.com. Cannot wait to see you next week um, as we will continue these really dope and dynamic conversations, these intimate conversations with executive leaders and professionals that I just so happen to love and adore, not only what they stand for, the platforms that they're building, um, but just like Alice said, how just like Alize said, how they are building bridges to, to gain access to more. This has been perfect, and I will see you next week. Bye. Hi guys. Thank you for joining us on the Got Value podcast. Remember, there is true value and purpose, and the greatest discovery of your life will be exactly what yours is. Stay connected with us at gotvaluenation.com.